before Allswar was even found. The Mages' College started at the beginning of the human country's aristocracy. One of their first missions bestowed upon them from the ruling classes was to consolidate all the knowledge of the world and study the ancient cultures that were lost to time. The second goal was to teach magic and academia to all willing to learn. After a long period of time, they separated the college from the aristocracy, which then became a standalone institution. The mages built Pedagogue, a great city around the college to house the greatest minds of the world. The mages educated the masses. The world praised them for their advances and gave them more and more liberties in the pursuits of progress. All thought this growth was a good thing. Mages were everywhere. They were in our cities helping to teach and guide the young. Magical sages were advising leaders all over the continents. They were in our militaries and assisting in all manner of things. Their designs and machinations were in people's homes and sent the society into a golden age. There was once a man named Del Rios, and he became the most dangerous man in all of Antharian history. He began to rise through the student body with his multiple theories of merging engineering and magic, as well as the staff, curriculum changes, and expectations of future students. After only 25 years, Del Rios was elevated to the title of Autarch of the college. After he was granted his new station, many changes to the college took place. The curriculum changed, shying away now from the sciences and standard academia, and more towards the use and control of magic in all of its forms. The college now became an institute for the elite, changing the name from the Mages College to the Mages Fraternity, and turned away all lesser classes, now only having a curriculum based on magic and its uses. Little did the world know, this was a prelude of what was to come. The college moved further away from being an educational facility, and moved into the political spotlight calling for some extreme reforms. They held an assembly with the newly named Autarque de la Rios. He was quoted in front of the masses and a royal congression. What fortuity nations have? They are filled with people that do not think. I believe I am acting in accordance with the will of the enlightened masses by defending myself. No. All of us from these ignorant whelps that are called the aristocracy, governmental bodies, and congresses. I am demanding a world regime change, a change that will put we, the mages, in command. The very mages that brought this world out of its dark ages, the ones that your children will owe their future children's lives to. I want to thank the architect for naming me the one to lead us and you. Let all know that those that stem the tide of this peaceful revolution and deny us our demands, we will make it violent and take what is rightfully ours. With that, the world took his speech as sedition and as treason to the governments that created and supported them. The nations had set out to end the mages, but they were too late. When the armies of the West approached the city of the mages, Pedagogue had vanished leaving only a large pit where the city once stood. It was the literal rise of the mages. They had discovered a way to levitate the city and separate themselves from the land, and began their own strike on the world from above, like the gods they thought they were. The mages' fraternity set representatives ahead of their armies with their only terms, submit or die. With the creation of the Arcanic Blockade in 825 DW, it began the Age of Subjugation only two years later. During the times of war of the Mages' Fraternity, it was next to impossible to send or receive any trade goods over the Maris Sea. The still budding continent of Alswar suffered greatly with the loss of their medicine, food, and trade goods. Many died during the beginnings of the strange embargo. It wasn't until 835 DW that the great realization was determined. Not a single mage had died since the war began. All 35 years had passed and no progress was made. At first, it was small raids and supply interruptions. 
it was time for a new plan. In 847 DW, a new alliance was founded, the Witchers. A Witcher was a soldier of necessity during the War of the Mages Folly. This small army arose from the north in Islay, and was made of a determined group of 100 men and women with the vast ability of nulling magic. During the war, this resistance cell was operated on the premise of taking out the mages, specifically with their anti-magic abilities. They did a superb job at canceling out their enemy's talents. Within the year of 860 DW, the mages constructed a landlocked base now known as Los Gladius. This was also the year that anti-magic bombs were created by the dwarves and finally destroyed the Arcanic blockade. This victory was sadly short-lived. The blockade was re-established five years later, and the Walking Cataclysm overtook the dwarves. The Walking Cataclysm was the bane of the dwarves and a curse upon the resistance. The advantage of this army was that it was filled with innocent people who could not control their actions, and this weighed heavily on the consciences of the resistance army. The members of the Walking Cataclysm are now known as present-day Hallowed. Within another battle for supplies, the Dwarves met the Hallowed once more. The Resistance forces were nearly crushed until the Dwarves began to unleash their new magic-dampening weapons. When the weapons blasted, the Horde stopped and then something unexpected occurred. The Hallowed's enchantment was broken. Most of the Hallowed integrated themselves with the Resistance giving them support. Some fearful of future control disposed of themselves. Eventually, the binding symbol that stripped them of their will and mind was removed. Slaves no more, they marched to destroy the fraternity and all mage sympathizers. On Forest 29th, 885 AF, the mages were defeated. The Day of Folly began with the strategy developed by world-renowned Captain Kelly. There were only 1,500 mages in total in the world and those mages controlled and operated their mindless hordes. The strategy was simple, directly attack the mages themselves all at once, at the same time, all across the world. There were not enough mages to hold off the attacks, armies clashed and fought, and as the mages died, so did their armies, either toppling over or running free. The war ended in flames. In the time span of 100 years, the war finally ended sending half of the city of mages crashing into the continent of Allswar's Inland Sea and the other half limping across the sky. On 898 AF, the Great Wars officially ended with the last mages' base destroyed, Los Gladius. The world was finally free. <laughs>